What is going on guys? It's your boy Pikam Funfan97 and we are going to continue the Photoshop CS6 for beginners tutorial. And we've gone over these tools on the left panel. We've gone over all of these right here. And I believe we left off on this second part of the panel, which is the spot healing brush. Now, if I haven't gone over that, I will teach you right now. So to begin with, you're gonna have the spot healing brush tool. You're gonna have about five options. The first one is spot healing brush tool. Uh, this basically removes uh, anything that's in the way. So say uh, this image, you wanted to remove it. Uh, in this case, I have my background right here. I did a layers tutorial on that. If you guys wanna watch it, I'll post the link in the description so you guys can see that. But you wanna make a duplicate of that or duplicate of that by pressing Command J or Control J if you're on Windows. And then we'll make a duplicate of the background image. So now you can start editing. So with my spot healing brush tool selected, you can simply click and drag just as you, uh, just as if you were going to use the brush tool, you would just click and drag and it will get, re it will remove whatever's in the way. Um, and say you wanted to remove this as well. You can do that. You can decrease the size of the brush by right clicking and moving left to right to increase the brush and left to decrease the size of the brush. And um, you can just, go like that and that will remove it. Keep in mind that it doesn't always work as uh, as you think it will. So you can use the spot healing brush tool. There's two different ones. This one basically if you click it, it's gonna be different. It's gonna ask you option click to define a source point to be used uh, to repair the image. So you would have to option click somewhere um, option on the Mac and you would sample this right here and then you can use it to go over and this will sample everything. But to be um, careful, you don't really want to go to, um, like if you sample, if you click right here or somewhere right here and you start coloring or you're going to start sampling the glasses itself. So you don't want to do that. So you want to be careful when you're using this tool. The next one is the patch tool. The patch tool um, basically works if you were to um, copy something. So say um, like, let's see. Like, I don't know, um, you could say this piece right here of this hair, you can circle it if you want to remove it and you would click and drag away from that and then you let go and then press command D and then we'll get rid of it. So that's kind of one of my favorite tools is uh, the patch tool instead of the spot healing brush tool. The next one is the content aware remove tool. Uh, not all people use this. I don't use it personally, but um, to be honest, uh, the content aware move tool you basically would select something, say her eyebrows, if you guys really do want to use it, and you would click and drag and that will make a selection or a copy of it and then it will place it somewhere else on another, uh, where you uh, wherever you dragged it and it will <laughs> take it off as well so you can see that she has no eyebrows anymore. So let's put that back. Um, and then you have the red eye tool. So this basically works, let me go ahead and open up a different image. Um, say someone had uh, let's select this one. Say someone had red eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the brush tool. I'm gonna decrease it by using the left and right bracket key. And say they had um, like some like red eyes. So I'm gonna make it nice and red. So say they had red eyes, okay? And I'm gonna do it right here. That looks a little scary, but that's okay. Go back to the red eye tool. And here you can select it. You could just click and then we'll remove it. So all you gotta do is click and drag or actually you have to highlight it and it will get re it will remove it. So you have to select all of it and usually it works. There you go, see, and it removed it. It does its best, Photoshop does its best to remove the red eye tools. Basically when you take a picture in your uh, camera, uh, usually their eyes will turn out to be red if you guys have seen that. The next one is the brush tool. I think you guys all are familiar with this tool. Basically you can just draw in whatever you'd like. You can change the mode uh, to any of these, say overlay. It will overlay the image so it won't be as, um, it won't be, the opacity won't be 100, it's gonna be like 20 or something. Um, so let's go ahead and move that back to normal. Uh, you can change the size by clicking the down arrow right here and upgrading or actually making the size bigger or smaller by moving it uh, left to right. You can increase the hardness. Hardness is basically how hard or how sharp you want it to be. 
uh, and then you can select any of these brushes. If you have custom ones installed into Photoshop, you can use those as well. Uh, so you can select any of these, if you can see as a sample, kind of looks like a cool effect to it. So I select the normal one. And uh, you can also right click and that will bring up the same menu. Um, so that's basically it for the brush tool. And I can, if you want to change the color, you can just double click this red box. Usually it's going to be like this. Uh, say you have a color filled in, like pink or something, and you have this one as well. Like say you have it mixed up and you, and you want to go back to the default option. You would just click right here, this two small uh, boxes. It's going to be black and white. You would click that and then we'll turn it back to default. You can also click that and make it uh, blue or something. And then you can color in with that. So that's really nice. Um, then you have the pencil tool. Basically, it's just a pencil tool. It's more thinner and it looks like it's a pencil drawn. And it works as the same effects as the brush tool does. The next one is the color replacement tool. Um, basically, this um, if you click and drag, this will um, sample it. As in, this will color... So you wanted to sample this, it will actually get a, uh, a color of that, which is pretty nice. Um, if not, then I have no idea. But uh, say you wanted to color in something. Um, I don't really uh, know. I don't really use this, the color replacement tool. So I wouldn't mess around with that. Then you got the mixer brush tool. Again, I'm not going to go over that because no one really uses that. The next one is the clone stamp tool. Um, pretty much this, uh, if you click and drag around, it will sample like whatever you have sampled. You have to option again, say you wanted a sample. You have to, when you hold down option, you have to hold down option and click. Say what you want to sample an empty area of the skin to remove these pimples. You would just click right here and you can see it's sampled of the skin color and you would click over it and this will sample out um, as close as where you uh, selected it to. So again, it doesn't always work the best. And then you've got pattern stamp tool. The pattern stamp tool is a little bit different. Uh, it just creates a pattern when you've selected it. So press Command J. You would double click and you would go into Pattern Overlay. Um, and you would have to do something with that. I'm not going to go over that right now because it takes some skill, like advanced users. And then you got the History Brush Tool. Um, pretty much you can just click and drag. It's like the eraser. And it erases, if you click this three boxes with the arrow, it's the history panel. And you click in uh, with the two arrows, you can make it bigger to see your whole options. And this brings up a list of what you've done in Photoshop. And it starts off from the beginning of what you've done. You first opened it, then we use the brush tool, the red eye uh, sam uh, removal tool. Then we use the color replacement tool, then the, you know, etc. And it will bring it up. And then you can go back in time and click one of those to where you left off if you messed up, or go back in uh, future time. And you can also delete them. It says delete state history brush, and that's what I've selected. So if you click yes, it's going to delete it. You can also check. Uh, you can't um, like select multiple, uh, so you can't delete all of them. You would actually just have to go to the first one, which is the original image. So that is how it works. And uh, it basically, you just erase it and goes back in time. This is the eraser tool. Uh, if you click and erase, this will erase whatever you've done in Photoshop. Pretty straightforward. You got the back uh, background eraser tool. If you go close to say the background, say his hair, this will remove the background um, if I can do it. Okay, there we go. Make sure that there is no copy or else it's just going to overlap the background layer. So just make sure that there's only one layer that is background. And then you can click and drag on the outside and Photoshop will do its best to go over. So you don't want to go this close because then it's going to remove its hair on his head. So you want to go, you can also decrease the softness again by right clicking. You can see my hardness is at 100%. I would go to 20 or 10%. And uh, you can just go like this and it'll go over. You can slightly go over the hair because the softness is at 9%. So I won't remove so much uh, hair or whatever you're going to be removing in the background. See, so you can just go like this, increase the brush size, and you can do that as well. So that's how it works. Um, now, the magic eraser tool, this will erase a, the background. It won't do its best. It uses high contrast colors. So white, it would select all of the white and it will get removed. So let's say blue, that's all going to get removed. 
and you can go like this, but this would take too long. So this works way better if your background is a solid color, uh, like black or blue or red or yellow or green, and that works so much better with that. Then we've got the gradient tool. Basically, um, the gradient tool is gonna be a little bit more advanced, so I'll do a tutorial on that one, but if you guys really wanna see it, comment below and I will do a tutorial on that. I believe I did a tutorial on that in my previous episodes. The paint bucket tool, or yeah, uh, you click or you double click the square uh, color right here, which is blue, and you would choose a color. Uh, say you wanted this one, and you click OK, and you click, just normal click left, uh, left button click, and uh, it will fill in whatever you color or whatever you choose to color in. So this comes in handy if you're doing like backgrounds for web or design or anything. And again, this works with high, high, high contrast colors. Excuse me. But yeah, that's how it works. Um, the 3D material drop tool, again, I'm not gonna go over that because no one really uses it. The next one is the blur tool. This will blur out images. I'm gonna go ahead and make my brush bigger and increase the hardness. Um, this will um, blur out um, whatever you're, like, it's like the brush, you would just click and drag. Um, that's like using the brush tool, you would click and drag, and this will blur out the uh, image. The more you go over it, basically it's like you're layering, layering the image over and over again, so it'll make it even more blurry, see? Um, the sharpen tool, this will sharpen up the image, so this will even make it better high quality, but if you go way over, you can see that it's starting to look really horrible. The hue is starting to come up. The smudge tool, um, this basically will make a smudge in the image just like that. So let's go ahead and back to our normal image. Um, we've got the dodge tool. I did a tutorial, a tutorial on that, uh, my previous t uh, tutorial, if you guys haven't seen it. If you're new to my channel, I would really suggest you guys subscribe because I do uh, do tutorials like this. The um, the dodge tool, basically the dodge tool makes images brighter and it makes it more, it adds more contrast basically. Uh, you got the burn tool, this basically makes it darker if you're gonna go for a tan, you know, you could use this if you want to. Um, so yeah, and then you got the sponge tool. The sponge tool basically kind of decreases, it's like, <laughs> I look like a, uh, the person looks like a zombie. Uh, by the way, this is not me. So um, this basically um, is the sponge tool. It like it removes the color, the saturation of the image. So yeah, and this is basically it. Um, this is all I've got for you guys. So if you guys want to go ahead and leave a like in the ratings below, that will be much appreciated. And subscribe if you guys are new, and leave a like to show some appreciation. Comment below if this helped you in any way. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.